Hi, so this is my model of a tensile rotary power transmission system for kite turbines. You'll have seen some of my spinny kites in the sky, hopefully. Uh, well, maybe when we just done video. They're pretty rare so far, but uh, this is how we intend to get the torque transmitted down to ground is over a, a set of lines like this. So what we've got here is a, a simulation setup. I'll set it running so you can get the general idea. If I get the reset timer back and just set the model running, you should see this goes a wee bit live. And you get compression of the length of the system as torque builds, then we've got torque and uh, line tension shown by these vectors, these black vectors on the top here, these arrows. Uh, they connect to the five connection points that we've set up around the top ring. Um, represented those with discs, just simple discs this time. And you see varying compression down the, the length of the, well, it's effectively a shaft with the separated, um, the ribbons in this case, spring lines uh, as, as they would be normally. So we'll take a wee moment to, uh, to work out how this all goes together. I'll pause the active part of this. Uh, it'll make it easier to talk it through. Um, I'll there's a loop back counter here. I've got to turn off, I'll turn off the simulation. Let's pause and I'll reset that so that it's back up here. Reset this again. Okay, so as with um, any grasshopper definition, you start out on the left, you define the geometry in, in this area here, and then with um, Kangaroo the Force simulation, um, stuff you you define these the, the force goals as they're called in, in grasshopper there um, you run it through kangaroo and um, in this case we're taking feedback from the the states we show some of the the points going through we pick them up on the other side filter them out send them back over for the loop to change the force inputs um, based on the new positions where they are into the into the loop so I'll turn off some of the active parts of the display just now so that um, I'm not distracted as we go around. I'll turn those arrows off. And I'll tell you, I'll turn off my disable kangaroo just now. We'll have a look over here. What we start with. Um, I'll preview some points. Right, so the very first part we start with is we make a line, we define a couple of points, and if I take one of these points, you can see the the model reacts to moving that a bit. And from those two points, we define a line of a certain length, and you know, given a wiggle about on that line, our, our whole model changes. That's our parametric model development that you get in Grasshopper. Um, on that line, I break up into frames. The so I, you know reparameterize the that curve that line break it up into frames and I tell <coughs> that curve that I want to you know, break it up at these places and on these places I'm going to have different size circles um, so these are the, the spaces where I want it let's show you changing this curve changes the curve of on the model the spacing between the discs um, so we'll just leave it there just now and this one changes the, the size of the disk. So it tends to be that the, the models have a, you know, a much thinner lower end um, than the top ring. So we'll make one roughly like that. Um, I'll pull that down a bit. Let's see how that one goes. And we'll run with four rings this time. Um, the disks, I've, I've made these solid components here um, from those circles. Um, made a cylinder, capped the ends off, and you can see that I've represented that um, and left that on in the model so we can see roughly where the starting point of the model was as it was spinning earlier. Now this is all gathering the points. I'll just show you that this piece here, the, the capped end, the it's a, a brett that it makes a boundary represented uh, shape that gets taken into the model over here with a a component called a solid part. So this is the disc and it's the, the discs and the points and frames. If 
in the reference the plane. Let's see if we can if we click on this that that should take us back to that, that part there. And the planes that they're represented on will be these planes, these frames here. So if we look, we'll follow that green line. That goes down into the, the planes. This just helps the, the solver, if it's been given a plane, it helps it work faster than having to work with the XY um, world aligned plane. The uh, strength of these components, that's a, a relative metric. You, they, they are represented in um, standard metric terms, but um, I, I really keep having a metric. If it's a solid part, I slam that right up. Same here. Uh, so that's the whole, that's basic, that's saying this one is how strongly the lines are holding onto the bottom curve. We'll go through how that gets there later. You can see the strength on uh, these meshes as well. I've used meshes instead of lines this time to represent the tethers that go up the outsides of the rings and that will allow us later on to apply wind forces and such on you know drag onto the lines as they spin around anyway back to getting the points get to the point rod and um, each of each of these circles i'm going to move this component out of the way just now we don't need that one. Oh, we do. No, I'm wrong. Oh, yes. Right. Each of these circles we align with the uh, first circle, the, the lowermost circle. This is index item zero. That represents this one here, um, circle zero, and this on the list. And so all of the circles are aligned with that, with this flip curve component. Sometimes the seams just don't line up when you do this, so, you know, if you're spinning it around. So yeah, I tend to always put one of these in just in case. So we get these five circular curves coming out. And on those curves, I've defined this time five. Uh, it, we could change the uh, number of... Um, I'm going to be using five on my next turbine, so I'm just keeping the five just now. Um, so we get these points. Each of the circles is divided into five points, and we get those five points out. And you can still see that center line there with the two original points that we had up there. I might just turn that off for just now because I am finished playing with that. I don't know. I'll leave the line on, but turn off the points. So those um, points, in order to make these sort of ribbons up the side, these uh, meshes, what I've done is I've taken the parameter point on that curve, you know, reparameterized, so it's zero to one, the distance of the way around the curve. I've added a little tiny fraction, 0 0.05 onto that, and that gives us a very thin uh, second set of points. Let's turn these ones very close to the original set. If I zoom in here, you can see this second point is very close to that original one. So with this I can say filter out the, the list that comes out of here. We've got a list 0, 2, 4. I get a panel here. I'll show you that. And that list goes, yeah, it's got five items, 0 to 4 there, but it's also got, ah, of course, we're going 0 to 4 now because we've got um, five levels as well. This was a wee bit clearer earlier. Um, maybe I should trim that down. Let's do it. Let's just go back to three discs. So now we have, yeah, zero, one, two, three. That's the three discs. So first disc has five items, zero to five. We take these um, A, this is the A in the set here. We go to A plus one. So coming out of here, we should have one. You can see that number has changed to a one from a zero. One, two, three. Oh. Drag that down. Yeah. One, two, three, four. So what this is basically doing is taking the next up, the next ring up. We're going, we're renumbering uh, this what was zero to the next one up. And the reason for this is I'm trying to develop a four point mesh. Um, so each one of these lines here will be a four point mesh. And if we look at all the points I put in here, when I, I dragged all of these, um, point elements into this, made each one of them 
its own grafted tree. The first um, five first five meshes there fail okay it doesn't matter they're not going to come out you know they, they don't come out at all. all all we get is the here we are these five by four uh, meshes coming out 20 meshes i hope that's clear enough you've yeah you've got the the two from one layer the two from the other layer and yeah you get these meshes come out and i've displayed those as that color there same color as the discs were. So we'll get rid of the panel. Hope I'm not going too fast or anything. Um, so this points from the lowest ring. What's that mean? That's uh, looking, this is a mask component. We're just looking for the zero uh, set. And that zero set is from these points, these first points. So we'll probably get five points out here. Yeah. Oh, 10. Oh, it's got both of them feeding in. You can see there's two green lines. There's the Green line from this one. I'll follow it back. There are two green ones. So all the lowest points on that net, all the lowest points on that, on that one. Yeah. All the points from the lowest ring on this set, all the points from the lowest ring on this set. So yeah, that makes 10. All coming in here. All the zero ones. So we get 10 points out. All those 10 points go into this force um, goal which they all just get grouped together and sent into the uh, the solver, the physics solver here, kangaroo. So what else have we got? Let's have a look. We have a loop system here. All the points that um, were on these disks, they go into the loop. So they all come down here into these points and get fed into the loop, start of the loop, and we're repeating this loop 15,000 times. It's a little arbitrary number, you can set it going however. Uh, that loop gets repeated over here. Let's turn all this back on again. I'll reset the solver because there's points everywhere since it's moved from last time, so let's reset that. It's turned off at the moment. Um, should be able to turn it back on and get the loop working. Should be working away now. Uh, you'll see it pulsing because I put a, a pulse system on it down here. Oh, it seems to have paused a second. Yeah, and it's working again. A bit slow to respond now it's working and I'm zooming about the place. Oh, and that won't help if it's jumping like that. Let's just get this smooth. So yeah, the, um, sorry if it was jumping there a wee bit. The kangaroo definition is up here. Yeah, it is definitely jumping about. The, there's a phased timing on the uh, torque force going into the top part of the model there. I'll just pull this down and, and pause it a second. Okay, so I've paused the simulation to free up a bit of um, compute time. It's a nine-year-old laptop. What do you, ex you know, what do you expect? It <laughs> that has to change. I'll sort that out soon. Anyway, the loop runs. Um, yeah, the data gets fed back once it's gone through these are the the same points they show up let's take you back to the, the development these points here um they come from oh i think i showed you this already don't I? the first and second original point sets there they get fed into the physics solver and shown on the other that show component just says okay these points they match on their side Initially, we send them in from this side, but then the loop sends them back again to here, and they get squirted back in um, on this side with the forces. The force gets sent in from this side, but the location comes back, and we work on it um, from its new location. So yeah, the force is basically built on the, where the points are, and I'll, um, it's kind of a... It's, I've just set it up as a multiple of the distance between the points at the moment. If, um, yeah, we get the points on the top layer, isolate them, and every second point, this component sorts them out into every second point. Again, this is um, just this mask here is looking for layer number three, so that's zero, one, two, three. These are the points in layer number three. This 
3 comes from our slider earlier. It's just linked to that. So yeah, this says go 3. We take those points, 10 of them. We shuffle them into um, that side A, then B, then A, then B in this dispatch component and work out the vector between those. We're pointing from A to B, from A to B. Um, those vectors I multiply by a number that keeps I keep swaying up and down. So I've got a, a minimum value, a maximum value. We'll play with that in a wee bit once I, I'm not zooming around so much on the document so that uh, we can see the effects of it. And so those points, they are given this force that's um, working around. That's the torque force. They're also given an upwards pointing force. This upwards pointing force, I just take that from the initial line vector. That's from that very first line. So I take that vector there. And that's our reference. It's an axial force instead of a torque force. Um, yeah. The points on the lower string, again, I just here, I just say zero, the zeroth layer set. Take those points, 10 values again. Um, we shift them and just, we're just taking five points on that. Yeah, we're just adding uh, five uh, torque uh, on, the, on the ground, the same as we're adding five points up here. We're only adding a force onto five points on the top ring. We're only adding a force onto five points on the bottom ring, just to make sure that's the, the same. Um, yeah, and each of the, let me explain on this top ring, each of those torque forces and the points where it's added, they get a, an additional uh, lift vector. Now the proportion of that, this is uh, a, a value, it's 5,000. This one's 3,125 times, and it varies between 66 and 125% at these times. It fades in delay of changing on the way out. Uh, so it goes up and down between those two values. That's why we see it sort of pulsing on the way. Yeah, so this is like our braking force down here. And that's like our, our driving our kite forces up here. And these are just our, our displays. Let's preview those that we can see on the top there. That's the like kite forces. And now on the bottom, it's just a set braking force. I could um, change that force, you know, shrink it, grow it. Um, and I could change, let's give a better view of that. I could change the amplitude of you know, the, the axial vector, shrink it right down. And so depending you know, what the mix is, we'll get different behaviors in the net out. We'll play with that in a wee second. Uh, right, yeah, I think that's everything had a look at really. Um, yeah, all, the, all the forces come through into the solver, um, we take the objects out, we can break them out again using that initial list as a guide. And that's the points coming out. They were the show points on their side and they get sent back in this loop with a little bit of a delay just to smooth out the, the data processing. So this is how we control the loop. This is how we control the solver. And what you, you really have to get the loop going first before you get the solver going. So I'll just run, reset that, run it. So I'll reset this and run it. Okay, and you should see it start to take effect. There's a bit of a dip in that uh, ring and it should pulse as the force pulses so there's a bit of a rise and a fall happening in that disc not a lot to see right enough let's go and play with some of the forces I'll move a bit so here we are back at the forces um, what's this one that's the braking force I'll turn that down a bit so we get things moving around faster oh, I've been a bit slow to react come on there we go. Seems to have taken it now. Um, I'll turn down the, the lifting force. Let's see when this one reacts. It might take a wee second. Yeah. Okay, that did take a wee while. And you can see from having turned down that lifting force there's much more of a dip in this now let's turn up the turn up the torque value you see it really compress the 
from inset. Once that grows, come on. Yeah, apologies for the delay there, but yeah, that's um, that's shrunk now. There's a, a much more, much more of a gap there. Yeah, that's really shifted from its initial state there. Okay, um, so yeah. I'll hopefully build this model up so that we've got a lot more going on in terms of uh, analysis afterwards, how these gaps work, what the relationships are between the relative forces and the, the shifts in it, how the dynamic changes, how it might pulse, um, how we can get movement throughout it. And hopefully, yeah, feedback more to you later. If anyone wants a copy of the the model, um, it'll be on forum awesystems.info. Um, yeah, I'll put a link in the description here.